Hello guys and welcome in this new video in the OpenGL series. Hope you guys are doing good. The last video was focused on things like shaders, vertex attribute pointers and uniforms, which is one way of sending data to the shader to actually control whatever is thrown on the screen. And the result was actually this, you know, animated triangle as you can see here on the screen. So just want to make sure that you guys have watched that video before you get into this because what we're going to be talking about in this video is based on what we've been talking about in the previous video. So make sure you go and check that out. I always provide a link in the description. Today's video is going to be about vertex array and element buffer. So it's just a way in OpenGL to actually organize your vertices and even draw things on the screen. But before we get started, just want to invite you guys to hit that subscribe button, like this video and share with your friends. I just want to give a small recap of what we've been doing till here. So we have this vertex data, which is defined by the position and the color of the vertex. So each line here is a vertex, which is defined by the position and the color. Down here, we allocate the memory on the GPU where we actually store our vertices our vertex data and we also define how the shaders are to use this data to actually draw our triangle and down here we simply call gl draw by binding the vertex buffer and then we draw our triangle on the screen using this program right here we also did more by sending data to the gpu to actually animate our triangle just wanted to show this because we're going to be now learning how we can draw this triangle using another type of buffer which is called element buffer so let's do that so as you can see here i just wanted to remove some noise so that this video does not get to, you know complicated because because we have a lot of things to handle so i kind of remove the colors of each vertex we don't need that to actually do what we're going to be doing so we're just sticking with the position so we have our vertex data here and you can see i created another array called element so you can call this index because we simply specifying each index of this object here in this array. So you can see zero represent this vertex up here. One represent the second one and two represent the third one. We have the same position as we had before, but we just define this element which reference to this index, to each index of this vertex here. Now we still have our vertex buffer because we still need to define how this is to be used by the gpu so we still create our vertex buffer bind it and send the data to it and down here we define the attribute now we only have one attribute because we're not using the color that's why you can see the stride is now three because to get to the next component up here we need to, to move three size of float not six anymore but three so keep in mind that you have to change that down here we create our element buffer so as I said in the previous video, we have different type of buffer and the element buffer is another type which we're actually creating. And you see, we do the same thing as we did for this guy. We simply send this element buffer array to it so that he knows the index of each vertex that are to be used. And that's basically what we have to do to draw a triangle using an element buffer. Down here, instead of calling GL draw arrays, we call GL draw elements. The first one is the mode do you want to draw it as a triangle or do you want to draw it as line or dot so that's basically we want to draw a triangle how many indexes does that actually you know have so we have three indexes what is the type as you can see up here this is not gl float anymore it is int so if you use another type here this won't work at all so you want to make sure you put the right type gl unsigned int you want to define that as on sign in if you even use int or float it won't work so you make sure you put that and the last element is going to be the first index the first you know with the first address where we're going to be starting you know getting our indexes we simply say zero because we want that first one basically we unbind our array and if we go up and run this you'll see we'll get the same result now one thing i didn't mention is we now only send our color once we don't send it each frame because you remember we didn't want to have too, too much noises because of the color we only send it outside of our loop keep in mind that you can also do that if you send it the color will be the same because remember opengl is a state machine once you've set the value of this uniform you will keep that value every time that's why we can do this outside of the loop so changing the value of this vertex right here on the x-axis to 0.5 will lead us to have a different triangle on the screen, which is something that we expect. 
now as you can see this is basically how we can draw our rectangle we just have to draw another triangle here just like this and we get our rectangle this means we need at least six vertices to draw a rectangle or you know a square box whatever we need at least six because we can only draw you know triangle shapes we need to draw another triangle just like here which has the same vertex at this position and this this one is just going to be flipped over and we have our triangle now and you see the problem is using six vertices is a lot of memory element buffer actually simplify the job for us in a sense that we can basically add only one vertex which which is this one because you can see this second triangle will differ from the first one just by this vertex up here this one will just be flipped over so instead of using six vertices which is memory you know inefficient we will use our we'll make use of our element buffer and just add one vertex and you can see this vertex up here if this is the center of the screen it is at minus 0 0.5 on the x-axis and 0 0.5 on the y-axis so we want to add that here so just add it here on the y-axis it is positive now if I want to draw the square all I need to do is to define a second triangle right here the first one use those three indexes the 0 the 1 and the third one which is this one and this one will simply start 1 2 and 3 now the last thing you need to make sure before you you know render this on the screen is to make sure you put this to six element because we don't only have three now we have six element so if I just go out and run this let me close this and run it again we basically get our rectangle on the screen and then you get your rectangle so that's basically how you can use element buffer to actually draw diff different type of shapes that's basically the idea of this video now there is one last thing I want to talk about because in the beginning I said we were going to be talking about vertex array now as you can see right here one thing is quite obvious if I want to create another triangle or another rectangle then I need to redefine another vertex buffer or another element buffer every time which is something we don't want to do I need to define it bind it you know do all the kind of crazy things that will end up you know adding our code count that will also use a lot of memory and we don't want that this is actually where the vertex array comes in the game now the vertex array it's just like a container which contains all the information about the vertex buffer and this is actually powerful because every time I'll have to use this buffer up here I can simply bind my vertex array and he will get this attribute for me and you know help me actually draw everything I want on the screen and I could even decide to use this data with another purpose just by defining different attribute pointers so let's actually put that in our code so to put this in perspective I want to just go and create a vertex array which is not so different from creating uh, all these things so I want to say gl you in vao say gl gen vertex arrays we want to generate only one and we want to make sure we put this guy so that the index will be stored inside of that now I want to bind it because we are going to work on that right now gl bind vertex array and we put our VEO now as you can see binding this right here everything I'm gonna be doing down here will be attached to this container so defining this VBO this uh, buffer data here will be attached to this guy and if I just want to draw my element I could simply go down here and bind this vbo and i will draw the element so i can simply go down here and unbind it because they are already bound bounded in this so I, let me kind of put this here so all this vertex buffer and element buffer are created inside of this guy so he's like a container for them i don't have to do this here inside i'm going to be changing that in a couple of seconds now you can see if i want to draw my element i don't actually have to always say draw element I can even I can simply go out and say I don't have to bind I mean the element buffer I just have to bind my vertex buffer let, let me kind of copy this copy this and paste it here and also unbind it down here 
so that's basically where i can simply use this guy to draw either the element or the array so if i call this this will give the same result something went wrong what was it now the reason so, why it didn't work is because we unbind our uh, array buffer and element buffer in our you know vertex array which is something we shouldn't do because this guy will take care of that as we unbind it down here so you want to make sure you don't unbind it because he's going to be using that so if i go and just run this you see i'll get my rectangle now there is one thing i want to actually show you because this is quite important uh, you don't have to put to create to generate this buffer inside this buffer here inside of this VEO. You can even do this outside. So I can do this outside. Just want to show you how important this is. Here also, do this outside. Here you want to make sure you unbind them because you're defining because we're actually defining them here. So you want to unbind them to make sure you release the memory after you've set all the attribute and all kind of thing you want to do you can see i can define my veo here i need to bind my vbo now because i'm going to be using it vbo let me remove this and also this guy it'll be like this you can see here i just define this data which is defined by this vertices up here and i just define this element buffer and I can simply go and define this VEO here, which define an object. And I can define how this VEO is going to be using the VBO up here. So I could have said, you don't want to use the three first element as the position. You might want to use the two one, the two first elements, just like that. So, and if I want to create another object, I would do the same thing. Just redefining this here, just binding this, I'll be able to actually change the attribute. You see? that's why we actually need this VEO. it's really important that's why i i thought it was really important to talk about in this video and so just having this like this i can simply go out and run this and i'll get my triangle as normal because we only have three elements and we're drawing the triangle using the array so you see the use of veos you will get more you know more detail in this as we start loading elements loading uh, objects you will understand why it's really important to actually have this so the idea is you can create a lot more by just you know binding the data that you already created up here and just use them so i think that's all for this video thank you guys for watching if you guys have any question any concern if anything wasn't clear enough for you just make sure you write me in the comment section below and uh, thank you for watching and ciao